Yo, what's going on guys? This is Ray and Jay here and welcome back to another video where today I'm going to be building my first custom mechanical keyboard and I've been a part of the mechanical keyboard scene for a long time now looking at different keyboards, different switches and all that good stuff and I think it's finally time for me to build myself one. I've been saving up the money to buy it and this video is going to be about the unboxing, the building and the final product. So kick back, relax and let's get right into the unboxing. In my bag here, I've got multiple tools that I'm going to be using to build the keyboard. One of which being this, a key switch puller. And it's used to, well, pull switches out of its socket. Next is this, Crytox 205 Grade Zero that I got off eBay. And I'm going to be using it to lube up the switches to make it sound and feel a lot more nicer and smoother. Next is this grey piece of plastic which uh, is used to open switches, it just makes life a lot more easier so you don't have to use a screwdriver and uh, all you do is insert the switch, push down and then lift the top and it opens it up. Next is this red thing which I'm probably not going to be used but it's used to pull keycaps off the keyboard. There's a much more nicer one in the other boxes to come but uh, apart from that there's also this which is a white piece of foam that I'm going to be putting in the case to improve the acoustics and make things sound a lot more nicer. Next up is this, the bag of Gatoron Yellows. I got these in a pack of 120 of AliExpress for pretty cheap and uh, yeah, these are pretty budget, feel pretty good and sound pretty good when lubed. And uh, to lube them, I'm going to be using this brush. It's got a pretty fine tip and it's super, super smooth to use. Next up, I got this set of screwdrivers. I've had this for a long time now and I got it at Poundland and um, yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, yeah, this one I'm going to be using to open the keyboard and all that good stuff. Next, we have this, the Skylong GK87. It's the keyboard itself and inside the box, you get obviously the keyboard itself. You get these two um, pamphlets, papers, whatever you want to call them. And uh, we don't really need those, so I'm going to chuck those to the side. And in the accessories box, we get two things. A metal key switch puller and a wired metal keycap puller, which is much more nicer than the red one. And of course, the last thing here is this. The Skylong GK87 with hot swap sockets, cool stabilizers and a TKL design. TKL meaning it's a full size but doesn't have the numpad. Hot swap meaning you can just grab the switches, plop them right in without having to solder or desolder or anything because that might be a little bit too dangerous for me. And at the back you can see you got yourself the flip out feet for an increased typing angle to make it easier and comfier to type. Lastly we have this, my keycap set. And um, I've searched long and hard to find the right keycap set. And um, this knockoff GMK Olivia set from AliExpress does the job just fine. The quality is amazing and um, yeah, overall a really, really good budget set. I have all of the links to the different parts in the video description if you guys want to check it out for yourself. But apart from that, let's get into the building process. Now for building the keyboard, what you're going to have to do is unscrew the top of the case. There's multiple screws on the top, one here, one here, another one over here, another here, another one over here, another one over here, and lastly, one final one over here. You're going to then flip the keyboard upside down and uh, you're going to take any old card and unlock the pins or tabs right here. It should bulge out like this once it's done. Uh, you then do this for all of the ones around the case. And um, yeah, you're then going to grab yourself a screwdriver and unscrew this screw right here so that you can get access to the whole thing. You're going to flip it upside down and um, yeah, you can just simply lift off the plate and the top of the case. Uh, for now, we're going to put that to the side. What you're going to do now is you're going to lift the PCB. You're going to see the daughter board down here. All you're going to do is go ahead and unplug it. It can be a little bit fiddly to do so, but um, if you give it a little bit of a wiggle, then uh, eventually it'll come out. 
and uh, obviously you need to be very careful with this cable because it's super fragile but uh, yeah take your time wobble it out and it should come out like this you're then gonna go ahead and grab yourself the foam and uh, what I'm gonna do now is mark out the place for it to fit inside the case and uh, this did take me a long time so I'm gonna skip to when it's actually done and uh, here's me placing in the final bit and as you can see I've cut a hole here and here so that the cable can run through and the screwdriver hole can run through you're then gonna grab yourself the PCB place it in like this grab the cable and simply plug it in again be super careful with this cable because it can break as it's really really flimsy but eventually it should go in then you're just going to rest your pcb down like this the reason why we put the foam inside the case is to make the typing experience a little bit more bouncy and sound a lot more better you're then going to grab yourself a screwdriver and you're going to pull on these tabs on the stabilizers and they should pop out like so. These stabilizers are factory lubed, but the lubing process is very, very bad. So we're gonna lube them ourselves. Just proceed to take out all the stabilizers like so. You're then probably going to want to find a uh, towel or something like that, some tissue. This is gonna be a messy process. The reason why we lube stabilizers is so that it doesn't sound like this. As you probably heard, there's a lot of rattle in the stabilizers and our main goal is to get rid of that rattle. So what you're going to do is you're going to take off the wire from the stabilizer and you're then going to take out this white bit and separate it in two. Do this for the other side and fully disassemble the um, stabilizer. Grab your wire and uh, use the paper towel to get rid of any factory lube because um, again I said the lube job on this is very very bad so we're going to do it ourselves. Then you're going to want to get some scissors or nail clippers which probably work best and cut off this leg right here and also this one right here. What that does is it eliminates the mushy feel of the stabilizer and makes it sound a lot more thocky, which is what I'm looking for. So you're gonna grab scissors or nail clippers, which probably work best, and you're gonna cut them off like so, so it's flat and clean at the bottom. You're gonna do this for the other one. You're then gonna grab the black part of the stabilizer, again, taking off any excess lube, and you're gonna take your brush and take the lube that we have and you're gonna take a generous amount and spread it inside of the housing on both sides. You can do it on all four sides but um, it's mainly the two longer sides that you wanna dress. You're gonna do this for the other one. You're then gonna grab the stabilizer wire and you're gonna generously coat it in um, a thick layer of lube on both sides like so do the same for the other side you're then gonna grab the white part and you're gonna put the part of the two holes on the longer side of the stabilizer you're gonna do this for the other one so grab the side of two holes and put it on the longer side of the black stabilizer you're then gonna grab the wire and insert it like so putting it in the bottom hole of the white part and then clipping it in like so and as you can see it's fully functioning you're gonna do the same thing for the other side again grabbing the wire and putting it in the bottom hole of the white part of the stabilizer and uh, there you go you've successfully lubed yourself your first stabilizer you're just going to have to do this a bunch more times for the other ones and um, I'm going to speed up the process here and this process took me around half an hour to do which is a very very long time Okay guys, so um, I started this project on the 18th of May and as you can see down here it is well, it's no longer the 18th of May, it's the 1st of June. And so I have school and stuff going on, so don't be expecting regular uploads until maybe around summertime, summer holidays. But uh, yeah, while I'm lubing these stabilizers in the background, why don't you go ahead and toss me a like. And hey, if you're new around here, why not subscribe for more content just like this. And I also want to thank you guys for 100 subscribers. 
It honestly blows my mind to believe that 100 of you have hit that subscribe button. So let's keep it up. Road to 200 and uh, yeah, let's get right back into the video. You're then going to grab your plate and your stabilizers and you're going to insert them into the plate one by one. You're going to grab the stabilizer and make sure the wire goes under the plate. Then you're going to clip in the stabilizers by pushing at the top and it should clip into place. You should hear that reassuring click. And um, you're just going to put all of the other stabilizers in like so. And uh, if you want to test the stabilizers, you can put everything back together, put all the screws back in, and then plop on a space bar and a switch, and um, just click it to see if it sounds right. That sounds so good. Mine sounded perfectly fine. And so we're going to move on to lubing the switches now. For lubing the switches, what I did is I opened the switches one by one with the switch opener. And um, these three bowls and bags are what I'm going to be using to separate the different parts. And the spring goes in the bag and the other three go in the bowls. So I did this 87 times, which is the amount of switches that we need to finish the keyboard. And uh, yeah, it's a long process, took a very long time and uh, my mum helped a lot, so uh, props to her. And this is the finished product of all of the different parts. Um, we're going to be lubing the springs first, so I'm going to put everything else to the side. And to lube the springs, what I'm going to do is grab a generous, a fat, fat glob of lube in the bag, like so. I'm then gonna close it up and shake for around five minutes to evenly coat all of the springs. Then lubing the bottom housing is simple. Grab a small amount of lube, remember less is more, and um, just evenly coat these two sides. Go at the bottom around the world and then in the center. You can lube the um, metal spring if you want to but uh, it's not necessary and then to lube the yellow stem all you got to do is grab another tiny bit of lube and evenly coat each side including the legs like this and once that's done you can place in a spring then place in the stem with the legs facing the metal um, leaf then you can grab the last piece which is the top housing and grab a small amount of lube and lube each four uh, sides then you grab the fat bit of the top housing and make it face the metal uh, leaf and then press down and you've successfully lubed a switch I'm going to speed up the process here. This took many, many, many hours, probably around four hours. Take your time with this because if you mess something up, then you have to go through the process of opening up again. And it's not very pleasant. So uh, guys, I um, I started this project during the daytime. And um, well, as you can see, it is it is no longer daytime. But I got all of the switches lubed up and um, and here is the final product. Hope you enjoy.